Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Michael McCarvel, and this is another episode. Uh, in this episode, we're going to review the Conoco tank cars that have just been released by San Juan Models. Matter of fact, I picked these up earlier today, and um, I haven't even opened these, so I was going to wait to do it now. Um, very cool boxes. See my new Conoco tank car in there. The sides actually have some. Um, blueprints uh of the actual car which is cool these guys research these things like crazy so um, i'm excited to open these up i have not opened these so we're going to do that together um before we get started take care of business i want to uh thank the friends of cumbrous and toltec for the conoco photos that i used in the intro um and we'll see them as we uh exit the video as well so uh um, i want to thank wes for that uh, been, he's been allowing me to feature his uh, historical photos in our videos, and I do appreciate that. Historical context is very important. Um, and I also want to thank Doug from San Juan Car Company. Uh, I'm going to put all the contact information, website links, and all that stuff down below. And I'll even list each of the photos that I used. Um, but I want to thank Doug. So uh, just to give you a little recap, uh, they've been planning this release on these cars for uh, quite some time, a couple of years. Um, I actually had reserved some cars so long ago, I forgot which ones I chose. So um, it turns out that as long as you had a reservation in, they just sent you out an invite. So um, I didn't really have to remember. <laughs> so, uh, But I, I do appreciate the time that Doug from uh, San Juan spent with me yesterday. Um, I've spoken to him a number of times at uh, some train shows and things like that. Uh, really cool. Uh, organization and it's just a small shop couple of guys like they say on one of their emails uh, you know they're not Amazon they don't release stuff like crazy so um, I've got some notes I want to go through with you guys before I open this up but uh, the production plans that Doug told me about were that they're gonna do three sand uh, they're gonna do three standard gauge rolling stock kits a year and one narrow gauge now that's the plan um, they actually were a little more aggressive in their initial plans. But I think they've, think they've scaled it back to that. Um, the uh, American Models is the, uh, there's, a, there's another company name that they use for their standard gauge equipment. Um, and they're releasing three of those. Uh, this, is the, this is the release for this year. And uh, they got it just under the wire. Good job, guys. Um, now, they've acquired a couple of different companies. San Juan Car Company is... This company. Uh, they also do decals. Uh, they bought Grantline products. Uh, a lot of narrow gauges know exactly who those are. So that's actually San Juan Details. San Juan Publishing, they're going to ramp up, uh, introduce um, uh, books and things like that in the future. Leadville Shops, there's some laser cut boxcars that are out there that have been released. Uh, Amer again, American Limited Models is their uh, newer uh, standard gauge cars. And then uh, Rail Graphics, um, and I'm not sure who the Rail Graphics, uh, what exactly that encompasses. Uh, it's not decals, because that, I've already listed that, unless maybe they renamed it and rebranded it. So let's talk about this production. Um, once again, uh, thanks to Doug for uh, spending me, uh, spent some time with me and giving me this information. Uh, there was two releases for this. There's the HO Scale Narrow Gauge, HON3, and there's the O narrow gauge uh, ON3. So in each of those releases, they had nine road numbers uh, for each of the color schemes, four color schemes. There's a black old style lettering. There's a newer style lettering, uh, well, newer second version lettering, a little fancier and a little larger. Uh, those are both black tank cars. Then there's a silver car with green lettering. Then there's the newest car that we're going to look at which is a photo on the bottom. You can see examples of all of them. I know it's pretty small, but um, so the ones that I got were the conical cars, the big style. This fits my era better. Um, I'm doing uh, roughly 1940s, early 1950s, World War II era. Um, always been fascinated with that. But let's talk about the number in the production runs. In O scale, there's four paint colors. There's nine road numbers for each of the color schemes, and they produced 45 of each of the road numbers in each of the lettering um, color schemes. So that's 
1,620 cars in the O scale run. Uh, the numbers he gave me for the HO scale run, again, same thing, four paint colors, just like you see below. Uh, nine road numbers per color, lettering style and color. And then a uh, total of 75 uh, cars for the HO scale run. So you HO and O scale guys can, you know, butt heads and argue about which one's better um, uh, and why they produce more for the HO. Uh, didn't matter to me. I was only going to buy three. So they had plenty for me. <laughs> so that grand total comes out to 2,700 cars for HON3 as opposed to 1,620. So. Um, I did get to uh, see the cars, the actual production cars out, and um, I can tell you the trucks are really, really fine um, uh, rolling uh, trucks, uh, you know, metal wheels, uh, you know, plastic bodies and details, um, pre-rolling, they have couplers, uh, you know, normal um, couplers on them. So they should be ready to run out of the box. Um, let's go ahead and open some, but uh, once again, thanks to uh, Doug for spending time uh, giving me the idea, uh, ideas of what they're doing. Also, in the future, they're talking about doing a, for those narrow gaugers out there like me, uh, their, their production plans are to do a new uh, release. No idea what it's going to be. Um, and again, if you're interested and you have some suggestions for them, by all means, send them to them. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. But uh, they're going to be doing one a year and possibly more. I even asked them if uh, they saw, they foresaw themselves doing another run of these tank cars. And um, he wasn't sure. But I think a lot of it has to do with how well these sell. I will tell you that he told me when I asked him to estimate how many he's already sold pre-orders. He told me that he, uh, he thought they were right about a third. 35 40 percent of the cars that were released that, that have been produced have been sold on pre-order and uh, he's expecting once it goes to the public which essentially it is at this point um, that that number to uh, uh, drastically increase now it's a small shop they're working on shipping the shipping is probably going to happen uh, in well today is um, Saturday so uh, the shipping is uh, going to happen he said starting Monday Definitely Monday, Tuesday, and then possibly into the following week. But they have so many to ship. If you look at the total, so the total number of cars is 4,320. And if they've got a third of that to ship, um, that's not quite 1,500 cars to ship. About a little over 1,400 cars um, for them to ship, assuming that they're in lots. That's still a lot of stuff to move through their warehouse. So, also, if you get to go to the office, which is right on I-70 on the frontage road, uh, very cool. Um, lots and lots of uh, um, uh, eye candy. Artwork on the walls, narrow gauge stuff, uh, narrow gauge cars up on the wall. Uh, I, you know, I could probably, um, anybody who has narrow gauge stuff, uh, or even standard gauge stuff, I uh, would love to just walk into the office and just hang out for a while. So it was fun. Um, but anyway, let's get to it. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll do an unboxing real quick, and then I'll do some uh, stills, and we'll show those of each of the cars. Now, I chose three cars. I'm a Rio Grande Southern guy. I chose three cars that I thought were um, on the Rio Grande Southern. Two I could find for sure, and then a third one, um, was in Durango, and it looked like it might have been headed up the Rio Grande Southern route. So I chose that one as my three, but that's all I could find. Um, one of the silver car that you see, the silver tank, that's actually at uh, Lizard Head. Or I'm sorry, uh, the silver one was in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So that one's like a 1930s era um, shot. And... Uh, the rest of these are all in the 40s and beyond. So anyway, enough talk. Let's go ahead and open this up. We'll take a look, and then uh, we'll wrap it up with um, some photos. Okay, let's go ahead and do an unboxing. And uh, this is the Conoco. Let's see, what do we got here? Number 27. So this is the first in the number series that I have. There's a total of nine numbers. Uh, once again, there's a kind of a really cool blueprint. It's actually on both sides. 
of the box. So you can see the break end and then the other end, and then uh, just a profile shot of um, the tank car. So you break in, so right end. Oh, you know what? They flipped it around. Anyway, <laughs> a squirrel. So um comes with a label. Uh, it tells you that this is a kind of car, uh, CONX number 27, 1940 paint style and associated lettering style. Built uh, June 1926 and then painted black. So uh, that matches all of the uh, small lettering details on the car. So let's go ahead and open it up. So it looks like it's got a clam pack on the inside. I'll do still shots here in a little bit. So you guys can get a shot of it. So it's got a clam pack and then a little bit of vinyl um, sheet protecting. So there's no rubbing or anything like that as it's shipped. Uh, these are made in China. So they came across a boat. So a lot of vibration. That sheet protects it against it. All right. So this is a CONX number 27. Uh, this is the break end. You'll notice it does have numbers on the end. Uh, I'm going to do still shots so you can actually get a lot better view of it. But just as this is kind of a quick once around, uh, there's little hazard placards on it on on each of the ends. Um, actually, on all four sides. Uh, there is a number on the side of the car. There's also a number on the frame in addition to the number uh, on the ends. So all four sides are like that. And then there's the all of the uh, informational lettering, capacities and things like that uh, on the ends of the car as well. And then the larger dome tank, or I'm sorry, the larger um, dome on top of the tank, which sets these cars apart. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see. But uh, there's a railing goes all the way around and then underneath all of the brake lines and stuff. And again, I'm going to take a still shot so you can see these. So these come out better because I know these don't come out very well at all. But I did want to kind of show you how they appear in the box when you get them. And let's do a little test roll. Metal wheels. And you can see they are very free rolling. So just a little tap. Rolls pretty well. Very, very, very quiet uh, and uh, good weight to the cars as well. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so we don't want to do that. Um, excited to get these things running. So uh, let me go ahead and do some quick stills and then I will feature those on a uh, the next few frames and then you can take a look at those and get a little bit more detail because I know this doesn't really show it as well. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I want to thank Doug from San Juan Car Company for allowing me to pick his brain and see what he can share as far as uh, future plans. Uh, sounds pretty exciting. Um, and also uh, Wes from Friends of Cumbers and Toltec for allowing me to share the historical context photos that uh, he's been allowing me to do for quite some time. Uh, links in the notes below for all of this don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon if you guys want updates on the next step that's coming up so uh, until next time guys take care stay healthy and uh, we'll see you on the next video see you guys